Hi everyone, welcome to this week's edition of the Prodigal Father Live. Um, sorry if you experienced a little technical difficulties, but there I had to, I had to restart everything, so we'll continue again. Uh, so if you're just joining us, let us know. First of all, let me know if you can see this if you're watching. Let me know where you're watching from and um, where you went to Mass last week, what the experience was like. Do you remember anything from Mass, a part of the homily? Um, let me know. Um, also, we celebrated last Sunday the Feast of the Ascension and also the um, it was the World Day of Communications on Sunday, so that was an exciting day for me. Ever since I went to college, my major was communications, so I love that Sunday because every year we get a message from the Holy Father. And so, as always, this year he's encouraging us just to use the modern forms of communication, but also he talks a lot about um, um, something that we're struggling with now, not only online but on TV and everywhere, is fake news. So he talks about how to overcome fake news and also spread the truth. And actually, that's what I'm hoping to do every time I use the media and new evangelization is to share the good news, to spread the truth. So if you could help me do that today, share this on your timeline, like it, and you'll spread some of the good news right here on Facebook. We're live on Twitch, on Twitter, on Periscope, on Livestream, and YouTube Live. So thank you so much for joining us. Again, let me know where you're watching from. I see we have a viewer from Australia. I just love this. So one of the cool things about the World Day Communications is that we're supposed to use this new media and reach. The, the gospel for last Sunday was um, to go, to, to proclaim the good news to the entire world, to go out to all the nations and proclaim the good news. And it's so cool because right now from the rectory at St. Gabriel's in Concord, Ohio, people can watch this from all over the world. We have people watching on every continent some weeks all over the world. So like I said, we have someone from Australia watching right now. Let us know where you're watching from if you're in the United States what city, what parish you're watching from, where you went to Mass last weekend, one thing you remember about it. And, um, and I'm going to share a little bit about some exciting news that is um, going on with me. And you may have seen it if you follow me at theprodigalfather.org. If you don't, go ahead and sign up there. I'm also going to share the link with you. But um, the exciting news actually is I'm entering into a time of discernment to, to consecrated life. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means and also... Um, what that means for me as a priest and maybe what that means for all of you watching. It might be a new thing for you, something that you might not know of, but um, it's something that I've been praying about for, for some years now and actually finally kind of had the courage to take the step and have been in discernment about this over the last five, maybe six months or a year. And uh, finally I was released just a couple weeks ago. I'll, I'll still be here at St. Gabriel's until early June, but um, after, after the first week in June I'll actually be released um, to... Uh, to enter into this institute called the, the um, Voluntas Day, so the Institute of Voluntas Day, which literally means God's will. So it is, it's Catholic, everybody's asking what is it, what does it mean? So it's a Roman Catholic institute, it's actually a pontifical institute, and what that means, it was actually, it started by and endorsed by the Holy Father. So Pope Pius XII actually started Voluntas Day. So he asked a priest to start this institute, called Voluntas Day, and this priest's name is Father Perant. He has beautiful writings on, um, on, on really the sacrament of presence, what it's like to be present to people and to be present to God. Um, so Father Perant founded this in the, in the 1950s, or 1940s actually, in Quebec, in French Canada, and since then it has spread throughout the world and is now in the United States as well. And uh, so I am discerning the Institute within the United States, and the wonderful thing about the Institute is because it is a pontifical institute, the rights are all over the world. So anywhere in the world we can act and live as members of Voluntas Day. And what's good about that for me and maybe for you is it means I can go anywhere in the world. It means I can travel all over the world um, doing the mission work that I'm doing, the retreat work with the Prodigal Father, so really teaching people how to pray. So why am I doing this right now at this time? And if you have questions, I'll look, I'll look forward to some of your questions and answer the questions. But why am I doing this right now? Well, for the last five or six years, I've really felt a special call within a call as a priest um, to really focus on the spiritual life and to bring that to other people using the new media. So what I mean by that specifically is over my time as, as a seminary and as a priest, I've had a special devotion to the spiritual life. I've always loved, even before I went to the seminary, I've always loved prayer. And as I went through the seminary and became a priest, um, I've had amazing experiences where I've gotten to make eight-day retreats and 30-day retreats and um, put on retreats myself and really focus um, a lot of time and energy in this. Um, and what I found is that the more I do it, the more I just love it. I just love this time of growing closer to God. And I think 
especially as a priest, I've had amazing opportunities. I get to celebrate the sacraments. I get to celebrate Mass every day. I get to hear people's confessions. I get to really have, as has been said before, a front row seat in the theater of God's grace. I've got to experience God working in a front row seat in, in a very unique way as a priest. So why this call now? So there's two types of priesthood I think it's important for people to know. There's religious priests and then there's secular priests. So religious priests, you may not know, but religious priests are the priests that often wear a habit. So if you think about Franciscan priests or, or Benedictine priests or Jesuit priests, our Holy Father is a religious priest. Um, Paulus, um, Dominicans, let me know if you know any other religious priests that you just know and love over your years. So religious priests, their primary call is to live in community. So they're really taken out of the world to live in community as religious. So that's what their primary call to live in community. Now, a part of that is that they're consecrated. So they're consecrated to God in a special way. They're taken out of the world, and they're consecrated in poverty, chastity, and obedience. So those are religious priests. They live out of the world in community, and they're consecrated. Now, then you have secular priests, and a more common name that we know is diocesan priests. So these are priests that live in the world. They live as secular. So they don't live as part of a community. They live in the world by themselves, not in community, serving God in the world. So, what I'm joining is actually called a consecrated secular. So it's a way for a diocesan priest, or a, par a, a priest that is normally serving in parishes, to be consecrated. And in the consecration, you vow poverty, chastity, and obedience. And also, because I'm making the consecration within this group of Valentine's Day, I become now um, kind of under that institute. And so I do, I will have like a, a superior that's part of Valentine's Day. So people often ask, where is Valentine's Day? So actually we're everywhere. We're supposed to live in the world as secular priests. So in dioceses, in parishes, um, Valentine's Day are supposed to live right where they are and become um, cons consecrated and become leaven. So leaven is like yeast that, that helps rise bread, um, like um, salt of the earth, you know, light light that brought, is brought forth into the world. So normally we remain right where we are, but we're consecrated and they're, and they're kind of hyper-focused. And so Valentine's Day, the focus of Valentine's Day or the charism of God, Valentine's Day is doing the will of God. So doing the will of God in your life. And as I often like to say, Mother Teresa often talked about a call within a call. You know, now her call within a call, she was actually called out of her religious community to found a new religious community, but especially to serve the poor. And so that's what she dedicated her entire life to, was serving the poor. I have always loved the missions. So many of you know I've been to Africa a number of times. I work with Catholic Relief Services. I'm one of their global fellows. I've taken most of my parishes every year to El Salvador for a week. I love that service. And I, I've often felt, you know, the, the desire to serve as a missionary. But honestly, as I prayed about it, I've never felt God saying, this is what I want you to do. Now, I have felt God saying that to me in a different way. Probably over the last five years, I felt God saying, I want you to focus very specifically on the spiritual life and using the media. So I've been wrestling with this call over the years. All right, God, you're calling me to focus on this. How do you want me to do it? And then the other thing that became a little bit more clear after the years was the parish, in the context of the parish, it might not allow me the total freedom to do that in the way that God wants me to do it. And I just say that because I have loved my 11 years as a parish priest. I thank God for the opportunities that I had at St. Barnabas, if you're watching from there, St. Joseph and Amherst, if you're watching there, and now St. Gabriel's, I've been here two years. I love being in the parish, and I love the people. But one of the things that I've discovered is that when we're called to go out to all the world, that makes it a little difficult, because in a parish, you're really called to focus on the parish. And over the years, I felt God calling me to go out on missions to go out to other parishes, to go out to other dioceses, to go out to, you know, and do missions and do retreat works and kind of doing what I'm doing right now to spend time going out to all the world and proclaiming the good news. And so Valentine's Day really has been a wonderful fit to help me answer the call within the call and now in even a more full way discern doing God's will even more fully in this particular way of life. 
So the terrifying thing about that is I don't know where it's going to lead me. Those of you that know me know that I love being a priest. I love my diocese. I love my brother priests here in the diocese. My intent is never to leave the diocese. I hope I can always be here and serve the diocese and the presbyterate. God might call me out of it and to do other things as well, but I just want everyone to know that's watching, I love the Diocese of Cleveland. I love my brother priests. I love all the parishes that I have served. I love my family who's in this diocese, and so I hope in some way I can continue to still serve uh, the diocese. But during this time of discernment, especially as I discern whether or not this is my call to consecrated life and to Valentine's Day, I'll probably reside outside of the diocese during this time just so that I can be a little bit more free to discern this call within the call. So the terrifying thing is I don't know where I'm going to live yet. I don't know where that's going to be. Um, you know, so if you know an institution or, or a place um, that would be good, uh, I'm, I'm looking for a place right now. So it could be anywhere. Um, there are some places I do have in the back of my mind, some people that I've been talking to, different institutions, um, some colleges that, um, that um, you know, could use me in some capacity as, as being on the college campus. So I'm just trying to, to find out where God wants to lead me to now. And really what's going to ultimately help me to make that decision is I have to say yes to whatever is going to allow me to take a step into growing deeper in the spiritual life myself and also making this more accessible to people by using the media. So whatever is going to allow me to do that more freely, I'm going to say yes to and I have to say yes to. And whatever is going to prohibit me from doing that, I'm going to be saying no to at this time in my life. And that really will take discernment. And thankfully, I, you know, I continue to pray every day and have my spiritual director and celebrate the sacraments. Um, but I'm really going to be using this time to discern, okay, God, where and how do you want me to live about this life, this call within the call that you've given to me? this call to really grow in the spiritual life and to share that spiritual life with others. And so the work really that I'm doing with the prodigal father is if you're seeing me now and enjoy this, you're going to be seeing a lot more of it. So really the, the idea is that I can do more of this work to share more of the interior life, the spiritual life that I experience with people, and to also give you the tools to help you to grow in the spiritual life. Um, I don't know how that's going to happen yet because obviously that's going to take a lot of time, energy, and resources. Um, and I don't know where that's going to happen yet. But I do know and believe that God is calling me to this. And if God is calling me to this, he's going to provide a place for me. He's going to provide a home for me. He's going to provide the resources for me. And he's going to find a way to make this all work. So that's the terrifying thing. But that's also the wonderful thing. Um, and that's why I use the name the prodigal father. The prodigal father is not about me, by the way. The prodigal father is God the Father. It is my true belief that God provides for us lavishly, that he wants to give to us um, in a free and generous way, and that as he's continued to give to me all my life, he's going to continue to give to me more. And he promises that whoever has given up brother or sister or land for my sake will receive not only a hundred times more in this life, but eternal life to come. So God, I'm trusting in you. I'm taking this stuff. So thank you again if you're watching. That's a little bit of an explanation. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Um, but I am entering into this time of discernment beginning the early June, and um, I'll keep you up to date. So if you, if you want to stay up to date with me, you can go to theprodigalfather.org. That's the best way to do it. Click on the link there, sign in with your email address, and, and we'll keep you up to date on and where I'm going and, and, and how you can continue to access, hopefully, the good resources that not, not only myself, but all those that are a part of the mission of the Prodigal Father will provide. So I'm going to take a second here just to see if we have any questions. Thank you again for watching. And I'm going to begin by singing I Hope You Dance. So cool. So Father Ruben, you speak, you, you, you preached in... Spanish and English and the Queen of Peace in Houston, Texas. We got people watching from Ireland. We got people watching from Australia, from Alabama. Um, so thank you so much for watching and tuning in. I have, uh, I'm, I'm going to begin this song, which is I Hope You Dance, and it's a country song by Leanne Womack. And then I'm going to talk about Pentecost and how we all can receive the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit and use those unique gifts that God gives to us in our lives. So this is I Hope You Dance by Leanne Womack, uh, and it's... Uh, kind of a little bit of a, uh, maybe an explanation of, of what I'm doing now and also what we're all called to do is just really take that step and trust that God wants to, to lead us in a wonderful life, uh, a life that takes us beyond anything that we could have ever imagined and also helps us to continue to become the people that God has created us to be, not only for ourselves, but for the greater good of the whole world so that we can truly continue to proclaim the good news 
receive the Holy Spirit and also share the Holy Spirit. So I'm trying to find my ukulele. I'll be back with you in one second. We're going to sing I Hope You Dance. Okay, here we go. Let me pull it up here. One summer I uh, took a drive in my, my pickup truck and actually drove across the country. It was probably my third or fourth year in the seminary. And this song kind of became my theme because there was just a wonderful freedom. Um, that, that whole notion of just going and, and trusting that God is taking us on a wonderful journey. And though I'm terrified right now, I really am terrified, I'm also in a deeper way filled with so much hope and wonder at what God is going to do. And I'm really just trying, when I, when I pray, when I'm at my best and I make my holy hour and I celebrate Mass, I just have this great sense that the Lord is taking me by the hand and saying, hey, Michael, we're going to go on a wonderful adventure together. And, you know, all, obviously when I go to the Father, when I'm at my best and when I'm praying, I just feel that sense that God is saying to me, Michael, I'm going to provide for you. You know, I am your Father. And just like an earthly father wants to provide for his sons, God the Father wants to provide for us too. So here is I Hope You Dance. Um, and what I love about this song is it just opens us up to this wonderful sense of truly being the people that we're created to be, using the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit, and uh, having this sense of kind of freedom with that, to, to really give and be ourselves as God calls us to be. So as I talked about, if you're doing my novena to the Holy Spirit, today's gift is fortitude. And it really is just having that strength to take that step that we're called to take. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. You get your feel to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty-handed I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens Promise me that you'll give faith a fighting chance And when you get the choice to sit it out on dance I hope you dance I hope you dance I hope you never fear those mountains in the distance you never settle for the path of least resistance Living might mean taking chances they're worth taking Loving might be a mistake but it's worth making Don't let some help and heart leave you bitter When you come close to settling I hope reconsider Give the heavens above more than just a passing glance And when you get the choice To sit it out or dance I hope you dance I hope you dance I hope you still feel small When you stand beside the ocean Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give fate a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out on dance, I hope you dance.
talk about the readings for this upcoming Sunday, which is Pentecost, and get you all set so that you too can receive the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, everything that God wants to give to you in this life. And the best part is you don't even have to wait for heaven. You can experience it right now on earth. So that's a wonderful thing. After Jesus suffered, died, rose from the dead, appeared to his disciples during this whole time, then he ascended to the Father and he sent his Holy Spirit. And from that moment forward, we would become Christ's body. We would become his flesh. He will continue to work and does continue to work through his church and through the members of his church, through each and every one of us that are the body of Christ. So if you are baptized, you've received and been sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you've been confirmed, you've been sealed with the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. All of us that are living out our vocations and um, desire to receive the Holy Spirit more, more fully, we will be gifted with it this upcoming Sunday. So we're going to go over the readings now, and uh, I'll take some time too at the end if you want to talk about anything that's going on. I hope you're, let's see, thank you so much for everybody for all your comments there before. And we'll pray for you too. So if you're looking for a home yourself, we will pray for you. That's the, the interesting thing about this is it's helping me even more and more realize just the things that people go through. It is scary. Life is scary sometimes, but we often, we ultimately trust in God the Father. All right, so I'm going to open up the readings. If you don't know how to find the readings for the upcoming Sunday, my favorite way is just go to Google. Go to Google and uh, type in daily readings. Click on daily readings. It'll take you to the USCCB, which is the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. That's our website for the U.S. And uh, you click on the day and it has the daily readings. What I like too is, and today I pray with it, you can listen to the audio. So somebody proclaims the audio as well, and you can listen to that too. So I'm going to this Sunday. Now you're going to notice there's three different options. There's a vigil, there's an extended vigil, and then there's the daily reading. So we're just going to go through the daily readings. But it's neat to know that those other options are there, and it's, I would encourage you to pray with them because all of, all of the readings help us really understand what Pentecost is. So as I'm reading the readings, I just ask that you type in a word or phrase that you hear. If you have a question or a comment or anything you want to know about the reading, or just type in a, type in a phrase. Um, right now, God can speak to you. So he does come to us when the word of God is proclaimed. So just by me proclaiming the word of God to you now, you can hear God's voice. So I just ask you to take a moment. We'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Open your heart and really ask and invite the Holy Spirit to come into you. You may truly experience the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That God may breathe his spirit into you and continue to create and shape and mold you into the person that he has always wanted you to be. So the first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the dis districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. So what word or phrase did you hear? You know, first of all, they heard them speaking to God in their own tongues. So right now, God is speaking to you. The second thing I think is so beautiful is when the time of Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all together in one place. They were gathered together. 
Do you know that we do this every Sunday? We gather together in one place. We gather together to receive the Holy Spirit. Some people say, "Why well, I don't have to go to church to Sunday, I, you know, to Mass on Sunday. I, I can go to my own place. I can go to nature and go to wherever. And Yes, we experience God in these ways, but not like we do at Mass. Not like we do when we gather together. There's something about coming together. And Jesus promised where two or three are gathered in his name, he's present among us. So when we gather together, especially at Mass on Sunday, wow, the outpouring of graces that God gives to us, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, is an amazing thing. So they were all together in one place. Then they heard this noise, like a strong driving wind. So that's one of the images of the Holy Spirit is wind. This noise of a strong driving wind. Have you ever heard that before? Um, either when a tornado is coming or a storm is coming and the wind begins to pick up and there's just that like hum of energy. So they, they experienced this phenomenon before at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was coming down to them. And then there appeared to them tongues of the fire. This part is amazing. I love the image of fires. I, I love this season of spring because it's like we can get out together and have bonfires in the summertime again. But this image of these tongues of fire. So this, you know, tongue is just like this uncontrollable fire just whipping up into the sky. So the, these tongues of fire all of a sudden appear and then they part. And as they part, they came to rest on each one of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So every disciple that was gathered there together received in a special way the Holy Spirit, and then something amazing happened. They began to speak in different tongues. Now, um, we have uh, the charismatic movement in our faith. Um, we have healing prayer in our faith. We have the gift of, of praying in tongues, and sometimes people don't realize this, but that is a gift of the Holy Spirit, to pray in tongues. I think I had this gift only one time in my life, and it was while I was in the seminary, and it was just before I went to sleep, and I experienced this praying in tongues, and I did it, I don't know how long it lasted, if it lasted for hours or minutes, but until I was so exhausted, and then I went to sleep. Maybe you've um, heard somebody pray in tongues before, maybe you have the gift yourself. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit, but what's amazing about this is it enables them to understand each other, and don't we need that today? To really understand we're so divided right now we need the gift of the Holy Spirit to come upon us and to help us speak the same language and understand each other and what's cool is there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem at this time so all the different countries are together they're all speaking different languages we hear all these I feel sorry if you have to do the first reading this Sunday you better prepare and be ready for it because we hear the Parthians the Medes the Elamites the Mesopotamia Judea Cappadocia Pontus Asia Figria, Pamphylia, Cyrene, Arabs, I mean, all these different languages, they're all together. You know, think about like the United Nations coming together and, all, and, and they can speak miraculously in a language, in their own language, they can understand, they can all understand, it's like they're hearing each other in their own language, even though they're from all over the, the entire world. So we have this image of Pentecost being the fulfillment. The second coming is already happening in Pentecost. It's God bringing together all his people into one. And then, at the same hand, commissioning us to go out. So Lord, the psalm is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. So we're begging God to send his spirit unto us today, right now, that the, the flame of fire can come into our mind and our hearts, and that we can be a set of flame with God's light. So here's the psalm. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be thy name. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. So the psalm, I love that last part there. If you take away their breath, they perish. That's one of the images of the Holy Spirit is breath. So breathing. And, and even in creation, God breathed his breath and, 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 and he breathed it into Adam, brought him into life. And he continues to breathe his Holy Spirit into us. And, and the psalmist says, when you send your spirit, 
they are created and you renew the face of the earth. So we're begging God right now, send your spirit into me. Send your spirit into the whole world, to all of creation and renew the face of the earth. I know one of the things that we, the Holy Father was just on 60 Minutes last night and he talked about how devastating the earth is becoming, how much we're destroying it. And uh, really pleading for all of us to take part in renewing the face of the earth. That we're all called to renew the face of the earth. That we all, all can be good stewards of this creation that God has given to us. And now we're going to go to the gospel. Oh, the second reading's not here. Let me, let me go to the second reading. For some reason it wasn't there. So again, if you're trying to find the readings, you can just go to the USCCB. Or just go to Google and type in daily reading. So that's what I usually do. I click daily readings and it takes you to a calendar that has all the readings of the days of the month and then you click on the day. So Sunday is the 20th, May 20th. It's red because red is Pentecost. I get to wear my favorite vestment, which is actually designed after the father of the prodigal father. And click on mass during the day. So t Sunday has... Pentecost has three options, but this one we're going to go with Mastering the Day. And here's the second reading from Corinthians. So if you're watching, just type in any word or phrase that kind of sparks something in you. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we are all given to drink of one spirit, the word of the Lord. So that's so powerful. You know, we talked about that earlier, that after Jesus ascended and sent his Holy Spirit, the church, his body, his body would no longer be here on the world. We would become his body. He's the head in heaven, and we're his body here on earth. And the amazing thing is that as he continues to breathe his life into us, he continues to build up his body all over the world. So Jesus, when he was just one person, was limited to that one body. And now, he, his body is everywhere. His body is right here in Concord, Ohio. His body is in Australia. We have people watching from Australia. We have people watching from um, Ireland. We have people watching from Europe. We have people watching from Canada. We have people watching from all over the U.S. His body is all over now. People can see him, can touch him, can experience him through you and your body. Only if we remain connected and only if we remain inspired by the Holy Spirit. And we can only say Jesus is Lord through the Holy Spirit. Now I love that he says that there are different kinds of spiritual gifts. And the more we come to know our own giftedness, I've really come to discover this, the less insecure we'll be. We're not going to become jealous or envious. I, that's just a foreign concept to me of anybody else's gifts because we know our own. And when we know our own, we look and look at other people's gifts with delight. We don't have to like worry like about what they're... We're so delightful in our own gifts that we can delight in other people's gifts and realize that we all bring something. We're all together as the body of Christ. And it's God that produces all these different forms of service, all these different ministries, all these different workings. For who? For everyone. So the gifts that I've been given are not for me. They're not just for the people of St. Gabriel. They're for everyone, for everyone. So the same gift is given for everyone. And though the body is many, though, though the body is one, there are many parts. So there's going to be people that do priesthood very differently than I do. There's going to be people that live out their baptismal call very differently than I do. Married couples that are very different. Um, we all are the body of Christ and different members. We have different functions and different roles and different ways of living out that, that spirit, but it is all one. We're all together as one. And finally, the gospel. So this reading is from the Gospel of John. 
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. So notice that again, we breathe. I mean, God breathes. Jesus breathed on them and gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit. So today, God continues to breathe his spirit upon us and into us, that we too receive the Holy Spirit. Now, a couple things are really interesting here about this reading. First, as he came to them, again, they're together. Remember, the disciples are together when they receive the Holy Spirit. We come together at Mass on Sunday. But the interesting thing, the doors were locked for fear of the Jews, so they locked the door. And over these last five years, I've been really praying for God so I, I felt this call within the call, and I've just been saying, God, you have to show me the door. I'm not seeing it. You know, um, if you're calling me to this, please open the door. That was before I even knew about Valentine's Day. And for a while, I prayed to God. I said, please, just find, kill this call within me because I'm not able to fulfill it. I'm not able to live it out. And then finally, he's opened the door. It's God, it's the Holy Spirit that opens the doors. The Holy Spirit can get into any locked door and, and open that door. So Jesus comes in their midst and he says to them, Peace be with you. And he shows them his hands and his side. Now this is Jesus, who has been abandoned by his disciples, disappointed by his disciples, betrayed by some of his disciples. And the first words he says to them are, Peace be with you. Be at peace. And then he breathes on them. And gives them the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. And so right now, God the Father wants to breathe into you. Just like he created Adam and breathed into him, he breathes into you now and wants to give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And when we come to Mass and we gather this Sunday and pray on this feast day of the Pentecost, may our hearts too be open. But even if they're not, Jesus can get in there. That's the great thing about it. Just come to Mass. Even if your heart's not open, just come there and let him open your heart. And I love the last part because he says, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose who sins you retain are retained. So he commissioned the, the apostles to go and to, to be this sacrament of, of confession. So if you have been away from the church for a while, if you've been to confession, don't be afraid to go before a priest. You know, people say, I don't have to go to a priest. I can go to God. Yes, you can go right to God, but there is nothing like going before a priest and hearing the voice of God and feeling the hands of God through the body of that priest, through Jesus in those priest's hands, laying his hands on you and breathing out over to you and saying, I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. There is nothing like it. So if you've been away from the sacrament of confession, go this Saturday, go to Mass on Sunday, come together, worship, receive the Eucharist, and may you too be filled with all the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. We'll see you next week.